Good morning and welcome to our Sunday morning service uh, for the Lebanon Church of Christ in Dresden, Tennessee. I'm so glad that you were able to uh, tune in with us this morning and uh, share this time together. Uh, this pre-recorded service is being made available for Sunday, uh, July 17th, 2022. And uh, we're grateful that you are able to be here with us uh, online. Uh, we are filming this a little bit earlier this week, a little bit different uh, timeline. Uh, it will be uh, debuting here on Sunday morning, uh, but filming a little early. Anne Marie and I will be uh, out of town uh, over the weekend. We'll be uh, on a little uh, vacation uh, and uh, be be uh, displaced from you. Uh, originally, and we have announced this for several weeks, Garner Good had intended to be with us and uh, share some updates about the work in Honduras and to preach for us, but. Uh, with the health challenges that uh, his family has been having and uh, their their family, uh, of course, uh, Rachel is dealing with cancer treatments right now and uh, have been touched with COVID also in recent weeks. And so uh, Garner uh, is not going to be able to be with us at the building today. Uh, Dakota Betts will be uh, sharing uh, a message uh, with us at 9 a.m. Uh, and then at 10 a.m. Uh, and we will not have evening services tonight. So uh, we had originally planned uh, not to have evening services simply because uh, that I would be out of town and Anne-Marie and I would be gone. Uh, but with uh, several families have been affected by COVID, uh, we're going to go ahead and have that service at the building. So if you're watching this on Sunday morning, um, you'll be able to uh, go and have our Bible class time and our worship time at 9 and 10. And Dakota will be helping us with that uh, this morning, uh, but no 5 p.m. service tonight. Uh, we know about that in advance. We've announced that in advance. But just to remind you, if maybe you're watching this on Sunday morning and thinking, well, I'll get back uh, tonight to be there for evening services, be aware that we will not meet at the building uh, tonight. If you are uh, here with us and watching this on Sunday morning, again, we're glad to uh, have you. Uh, we know that we have some of our uh, regular members who attend with us uh, frequently in person who, again, are dealing with health challenges or a COVID uh, resurgence, uh, maybe in their family, uh, and maybe joining us today. Uh, there are probably others that this may be your first time with us. You may have stumbled across this or someone shared it uh, on their social media, and we're certainly glad to have you as well. Uh, as we usually do, we'll begin with a word of prayer, and I'll offer that prayer, and we'll uh, make mention of some things that are going on in our world and in our congregation, uh, things to be thankful for and things to ask for God's uh, continued uh, guidance and grace and help with. Uh, and then we'll have a lesson from God's Word. Uh, we've been talking about the importance of choices uh, in uh, the month of July. And today we're going to talk about uh, some things that will happen or have to happen uh, if we are going to faithfully decide uh, to follow Jesus. And we'll make mention of that in our lesson time. And then for those of you who uh, may be preparing to take the Lord's Supper uh, this morning, uh, we do that each first day of the week at Lebanon, uh, the bread and the cup. Uh, and we'll offer a couple of prayers here if you're doing that at home with your family today uh, that you can participate in. If not, that can just be a time of reflection for you. Uh, we'll have a few announcements that will mainly pertain to our local folks, uh, and then we'll be dismissed uh, in prayer. Uh, again, appreciate your uh, continued presence here. Uh, I know uh, as time has gone on, uh, a lot of us have been able to return to in-person services. I know we've had folks watching uh, from other parts of the country or even other parts of the world uh, who have perhaps have uh, had more restrictions in place uh, than we have had uh, here locally. Uh, but whatever brings uh, you to us today, uh, we're thankful for your presence. We're thankful for uh, your desire to set aside this time uh, and spend it uh, in God's Word uh, and in uh, this virtual fellowship as best we can. Uh, with God's people. Let's go ahead and pray together, uh, and then we'll step into our lesson time this morning. Let's pray. Our Lord and our Father in heaven, we are grateful uh, for the ability to come into your presence this morning once again. We're thankful for the blessings that we have had that have uh, allowed us to go through another week. We're thankful for the health that we enjoy. We're thankful for the many uh, physical blessings and uh, blessings of uh, health and emotional health uh, that have allowed us to, to take this time today. And we give you the glory, Lord, for all the uh, good gifts that we have in our lives and for the, the abilities that you have blessed us with uh, that allow us to be here today. Lord, we do have uh, in our congregation many who are struggling, uh, many who are dealing with sickness or sickness in their families, uh, with loss of loved ones, with 
uh, troubles and trials due to the economic situation and the the effects of uh, ongoing ongoing uh, presence of COVID in our world. And Lord, we just ask and we lift those people up to you this morning uh, that you would strengthen them, that you would bless them with healing, with comfort, um, and that you would show us ways that we can be used uh, to be a blessing and to be an encouragement to the end. We know that there are those who have uh, lost loved ones in our congregation, those who may be traveling uh, to attend uh, funerals or memorial services in the coming days. And Lord, we ask again that you would provide that measure of comfort that only you can give, but also make us aware of ways that we can uh, be a strength and a help to these folks. We pray for our community as we continue to uh, struggle uh, with the after effects of the storm, the after effects of uh, the challenges that we face locally. We ask that you would bless our leaders and bless those who are volunteering their time and putting forth effort uh, to help us here at home. We pray also for those who are sharing the gospel, particularly in difficult places today. There are many places in our own country where the church is not strong and where it's very difficult to uh, get any sort of traction uh, with the community and sharing the gospel. And we ask that you would bless those efforts, that you would bless those who are uh, in foreign places today, uh, whether they're uh, in places that are affected by physical poverty or places affected by spiritual uh, apathy, spiritual disbelief. There may even be those who are in places where it is dangerous to be a Christian or dangerous to share the gospel. And we ask that you would watch over them. And we particularly ask that you would be with uh, the families and individuals that we support here. Uh, Chris Carter and his family, Lance Mosier and his family, the work at Bear Valley, the work at Freed Hardman, the ongoing work in Honduras uh, for all the men and women who have active parts in these various works and for those that oversee the works and collect the funds and uh, arrange the shipments of supplies. We know, Lord, there are people all along uh, that pathway who are playing a vital part. And we ask that we would continue to pray and that we continue to give uh, and that we would be grateful uh, for the opportunity to share in your work in these ways. Help us, Lord, also to look for opportunities in our lives each day. Uh, to talk to those that we love uh, about the message of Jesus. We're so thankful for Jesus, uh, for the fact that he was willing to be a sacrifice for us, that he becomes a way uh, that we can approach you. He becomes the way that we can come to you uh, as his uh, younger siblings. He is our elder brother and you are our father. And we're thankful for that family relationship that we can have through him. We know, Lord, in our community, there are many people who are struggling uh, they are discouraged in their faith. They are uh, lost without that relationship with you. And we ask that hearts would be open and that our um, eyes would be open to see those opportunities and to share your love with them. Be with us through this service today. Continue to bless those who are serving us in so many different ways. Uh, watch over us all and keep us safe. Again, we're thankful for Jesus and for the forgiveness that we can have through him. It's in his name we pray. Amen. Amen. Uh, it is, again, good to see each one of you here uh, and to have this opportunity to be uh, be together uh, today. We have been talking about decisions uh, in the month of July and the importance of making uh, faithful decisions and the fact that our decisions matter. Uh, one of the uh, biggest challenges that I think we face, both uh, from religious folks on one side uh, and and from worldly folks, uh, perhaps on the other folks that are not uh, seeking a relationship with God, is this um, kind of belief that no matter what we do, what's going to happen is going to happen, uh, that there's no way to overcome our situation, that the problems are um, that the problems are too great, uh, that the things that we face are too difficult uh, for us to make any difference uh, for my individual decisions or your individual decisions to make any difference uh, in our world. And yet we know, certainly in in smaller aspects, day-to-day -day aspects of life, that our decisions do make a difference. And faithfulness in small decisions ultimately adds up. Uh, I've had the experience, uh, even this past week, and maybe you have, have too, of uh, you get a call uh, on your phone, and maybe you don't recognize the number, and so you let it ring, and you let it ring, and you let it ring, and it goes to voicemail, um, and then you have the decision then, uh, if you have your voicemail set up and the person leaves a message, uh, whether or not to return the call and whether or not to return it on uh, your own timetable. 
Uh, I'm particularly bad about this if uh, I know that I'm going to get a call at some point, but not really sure when. Uh, maybe from uh, some, um, you know, a follow-up or, or maybe to confirm an appointment. It's not something where it's even maybe going to be a live person uh, on the other end. It may just be something automated and a number pops up and it may be a Memphis number or Nashville number and we don't immediately recognize it and maybe we're in the middle of something else and, and we let it go. Uh, and a lot of times there's no message. It's just junk. Uh, it wasn't something important. But sometimes that message is left. And there is a piece of information that we need, uh, but we choose then uh, to return uh, that call. In the scriptures, um, in his personal, earthly, uh, physical ministry, Jesus called uh, quite a number of people. Uh, and particularly when we think about um, the calling of Jesus or Jesus uh, calling uh, people to be his disciples, we think about the calling of um, of the original four, I guess we might say, uh, of Peter, Andrew, uh, James, and John. And they were called, uh, we recall, and this is in, in three of the gospel narratives, it's given in this way, uh, from their uh, fishing uh, to pursue a totally different uh, lifestyle, to pick up something that they had never done before, uh, to go from being, um, you know, working men, uh, we would say blue collar, you know, laborers, uh, people that had a, a, a business, uh, people that were not rabbis, they were not religious teachers. Uh, they certainly were Jewish uh, believers, uh, had faith uh, in the Old Testament God, uh, the God of Moses, had faith in the covenant. They show a familiarity in their language uh, with the stories uh, of the Old Testament. Uh, but they were everyday people, and Jesus called them and they had to decide whether or not uh, to answer and how faithful they would be uh, in answering that call. Today, um, obviously, we're not seeing Jesus physically walk up to us at our school or walk up to us at our place of business and call us to leave everything and follow him. Uh, it's not that uh, direct uh, relationship that we can't see uh, Jesus physically, he can't reach out his hand and, and call to us as he called to Peter uh, to come to him on the water, or as he called Matthew uh, to leave the tax booth. And yet, um, we can learn some lessons about how uh, the disciples responded to that call that can then uh, be carried over into how we can uh, decide to follow Jesus uh, today and be faithful in that decision uh, for the sake of time, I'm not going to look at each one of those accounts, but those accounts are found in Mark chapter 1, uh, Matthew chapter 4, and Luke chapter 5, uh, the calling of uh, the fishermen disciples. Uh, and then, of course, the other um, uh, disciples and other apostles are called uh, in different uh, ways and at different times uh, in the Scripture. And some of those, of course, are included uh, in John's Gospel as well. I want to make... Um, if I can, uh, in the time that we have, just, just three very basic uh, observations that I think are um, simple uh, in, in their uh, wording, at least, but can be very uh, challenging for us to carry out uh, in the way that we live. The first thing I'll suggest, and these are all going to be based on what deciding to follow Jesus uh, will lead us to do, okay? Um, and first, I would suggest that deciding to follow Jesus will lead us to make uh, sacrifices. Deciding to follow Jesus will lead us to make uh, sacrifices. Um, in the calling of the disciples, uh, the point is emphasized, uh, particularly with James and John, that they left their father Zebedee, uh, they left their business associates, their servants, uh, and they followed after Jesus. They left all and followed him. Uh, to become, um, uh, you know, his, his uh, to have this new uh, relationship uh, as his disciples. Uh, they said farewell uh, to their families. Um, we know that at different times they would pass through and see their families, but at least initially uh, they were on the road with Jesus uh, for these years of his earthly ministry. Uh, they said goodbye to their homes. Uh, they said goodbye to their hometowns. Uh, many of us uh, are living very close to extended family. Uh, you know, we're right here in Greenfield where Anne-Marie and I are, 
uh, we can drive uh, just about, uh, really, if, even if we extend it out to two hours, we can drive in any direction uh, and see just about all of our, our closest family members and even many of our extended family members. And yet, when the early disciples chose to become followers of Jesus, uh, they were sacrificing uh, those relationships, uh, not just because of physical distance, uh, but because they were choosing to follow a new path, uh, especially after the church uh, in the book of Acts becomes more defined uh, and separate and apart from the synagogue system and the Jewish system and Gentiles are brought in. Uh, early disciples were making uh, many times a break uh, with their families, with their friends, uh, with the people that they had grown up with, uh, their community of origin, their religious uh, background. They were sacrificing much of that in order to be followers of Jesus and certainly comfort um, if you were living in a village beside the Sea of Galilee and you were married, uh, as we know Peter was, uh, and perhaps many of the others were as well, uh, you have a family, you have a home, uh, you have uh, a bed to sleep in, you have a wife, you have children. Uh, certainly later, uh, women were called. Uh, we think about um, you know Paul's instruction in Corinthians about uh, and Peter later in, in First uh, Peter, the idea of believing women and living with unbelieving husbands. And certainly there's some tension uh, that would be created there, the comforts of home life uh, that would have to be sacrificed. All of those things are in the foreground uh, for those early disciples. And of course, they're still uh, very much a part of discipleship for many people today. I want to read uh, from Matthew's Gospel. Uh, this is following uh, Jesus's um, a challenge to the rich young ruler. Uh, he challenges the rich young ruler to sell all and to follow him. Uh, the rich young ruler is unwilling to do that. We know from uh, the accounts in Mark, Luke, and in Matthew as well. Uh, but then Jesus turns to his disciples, and this is Matthew chapter uh, 19, beginning with verse 23. Then Jesus said to his disciples, Assuredly, I say to you that it is hard for a rich man to enter into the kingdom of heaven. And again, I say to you, it is easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than for the rich man to enter the kingdom of God. Um, his disciples, of course, are, are a little bit disturbed by that. They had a, enough of uh, the common human sense of uh, prosperity uh, that, that God, that the rich are blessed, that the poor are not blessed. And so they are astonished at this, and they say to Jesus in verse 25, Who then uh, can be saved? And But Jesus looks at them and says, With men this is impossible. In other words, in our own strength for any person it's impossible to be saved. But with God all things are possible. Then Peter, uh, one of those who was called to make such sacrifices, uh, answered and said to Jesus, See, we, that is the disciples, the apostles there, have left all and followed you, Therefore, uh, what shall we have? We'll look a little bit further in that passage in just a moment. Uh, Peter issues a very direct question to Jesus. Um, in contrast with the rich young ruler, uh, who apparently was a very moral person, a very God-fearing person, uh, at least on, on his outward appearance and on the surface level, he ultimately was not willing uh, to make that sacrifice that Jesus called him to make. And Peter says, well, we have done that. Uh, so what shall we uh, have? In the case of the rich young ruler, um, what was holding him back was his uh, possessions or his wealth or his status as a person uh, with positions or wealth. And for many people today, and for many of us, there is something in our life that is holding us back from fully following Christ. Uh, we may be a Christian. Uh, we may be someone who's made that initial commitment perhaps long ago. Uh, the rich young ruler was faithful if we're thinking about being faithful in terms of Judaism uh, and his fulfillment. He talks about how he has kept the commandments uh, from his youth up, and yet something is keeping him uh, from a full relationship with God. In his case, it was uh, wealth. Uh, in his case, it was possessions. Uh, wealth and possessions are not necessarily bad things. Uh, we read of several uh, very prominent people in the New Testament, Lydia, Barnabas, um, others who had possessions and who used them for God's glory. Uh, it was his relationship to his wealth that was the barrier. And that can be true of us as well. It's not necessarily bad things that we are unwilling to sacrifice, but they are things that have created barriers between us and God. 
If we are going to decide to follow Jesus, it will lead us to make sacrifices. It will lead us to leave certain relationships behind. Uh, it will lead us uh, lead us to uh, perhaps leave a career behind. Uh, it will lead us to perhaps uh, have to change uh, our uh, the way that we use our time, the way that we use our financial resources. Uh, there have to be sacrifices that are made. Unless we are willing to yield our desires uh, to Christ, we cannot truly follow him. And I think the challenge for us is not, um, for most of us at least, it's not the sacrifice of, of having to cut off our family or not the sacrifice of having to sell all that we have and move to the mission field. Um, the sacrifice that we have to make is, is sometimes far more dear than that. Uh, it's a hobby. Uh, it's the way that we spend our time. It's our relationship with our children, uh, the way that we have allowed our activities and our busyness uh, to become idols in our hearts, uh, the way that we are not willing uh, to sacrifice our own pleasure or our own comfort uh, to spend time with God's people, to spend time uh, with the Lord in study and in prayer. And that's a challenge for all of us. Uh, we we perhaps have a more difficult time making those sacrifices because they don't seem all that important. Uh, they don't seem like big things. Um, you know, we're not called to uh, die for the faith. Uh, we're called to live faithfully uh, here and now. And it requires a lot of little deaths, a lot of little sacrifices uh, along the way. And we have to be willing to yield all of those desires to Christ. And so uh, if we're going to uh, follow Jesus, it's going to lead us to make sacrifices of one kind or another. But I would also suggest um, that uh, deciding to follow Jesus will lead us to take uh, to take risks. I think about uh, how the gospel writers, the four of them, uh, paint that picture, particularly with the three accounts of the fishermen, uh, that they left their nets and followed Jesus. Um, it makes it seem very much so uh, that this was not, uh, we know from from reading between the lines, they had known who John the Baptist was. They had even, some of them, uh, seen John the Baptist reference Jesus in, in some way. Uh, but it was a very direct decision uh, to go from being fishermen, men that fish for fish, to being fishers of men, uh, men that are going to uh, try to uh, snare uh, people with the good news of Christ uh, and, to, and to engage them uh, in this gospel service. Uh, they left a sure career, a generational career. Uh, James and John are pointed out uh, repeatedly as being the sons of Zebedee. Uh, Zebedee apparently was a prominent enough person uh, that uh, he had an enterprise uh, with boats and ser multiple boats, servants, uh, and he's referenced, uh, you know, as their their father multiple times um, uh, in the sense that 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 he was known at least uh, initially uh, to those who would have been familiar with him. Uh, they left a certain thing behind uh, in order to take the, on this new vocation of following Jesus. Many of us, and I'll confess this about myself, uh, we love stability, we love routine, um, and the life dedicated to Jesus doesn't always fit that mold. Uh, Jesus will talk about, you know, that uh, you know foxes have dens, birds have nests, uh, but the Son of Man has no place to lay his head. In Matthew chapter eight and verse twenty. Um, we like structure, most of us. Uh, even if we're a pretty spontaneous person, we want a, a retirement plan to fall back on. We want to have insurance in case uh, we get sick or in case we have an accident. We want uh, to have things in place where there's a sense of security, where there's a sense of comfort. And yet the message of Jesus is continually uh, calling us to take, uh, to take risks. Uh, I have been blessed in my life to know uh, many people uh, through primarily through uh, going to school at Freed Hardman and, and having friends um, who've done various things on the mission field, uh, to know people that really stepped out in faith and did something that they had never done uh, to take the gospel to a very difficult place. Um, we have known in our community uh, men and their families who had very secure uh, positions, very secure uh, employment, uh, who just realized that the talents that they uh, had been given and the blessings that they had received, that they knew that uh, they could do more uh, for the kingdom. And so they sought training uh, and sought to go out and to share the gospel uh, in a different way. 
I think also about not just in examples of missionaries or preachers, uh, but people who give sacrificially. Uh, I'm I'm so thankful for many in our congregation who uh, give uh, so much, uh, even behind the scenes, um, who don't want a lot of fanfare, but they are risking um, the fact that they know that some of those funds, uh, you know, there's going to be some loss. There's going to be some things that don't work out. There's going to be some uh, efforts that we support that maybe uh, fall short of our expectations, and yet that is not as an excuse. Um, they don't use that as an excuse not to support the work of the Lord. Um, they're willing to put that money out there. They're willing to put that time out there uh, and to invest uh, in that way. Um, there has to be some risk in anything uh, worth having. Um, there, and, and I think sometimes, again, we think of risk in terms of you know, getting on a, a ship in the 1800s and sailing across the seas uh, you know, to cannibal lands. Uh, but there's a lot of risk that takes place a lot closer to home. Uh, I think about people who uh, it would be very easy for them, uh, and some of you may be in this position this morning, it would be very easy to be quiet uh, about your faith. It would be very easy to uh, back off. I think COVID, um, the restrictions uh, and the, the self-regulation that we have attempted to practice, I think that's revealed to us um, that that it could be very easy to just kind of drift uh, away and to not take that risk, not just with our physical health, but the risk of putting ourselves out there and saying, this is what I believe, uh, and I'm going to be faithful to this, and I'm going to reach out to others uh, with this message. I think about how Saul, uh, who became Paul, he left his position as a respected rabbi. Uh, he would have no doubt become a member of the Sanhedrin uh, if he wasn't already uh, and would have had a great career uh, based on his own testimony in Judaism, uh, and yet he gave that away uh, when Jesus stepped into his life uh, in a dramatic way, of course. Zacchaeus and Matthew, they had great jobs uh, as tax collectors. They weren't probably the most moral jobs in the world, but they were certainly financially uh, comfortable. They were prosperous. As we've mentioned, Peter, Andrew, James, and John uh, and perhaps others. They were small business owners. They gave that up. Simon the Zealot, uh, he's distinguished for being a, a, a politically involved person, and yet he apparently steps away from trying to uh, overthrow the Roman government by force and becomes instead a follower of Jesus. Uh, all of these men, and certainly others that go unnamed, and so many women as well, uh, some of them uh, you see in these lists that'll say, you know, they were married to someone who was prominent or they were part of the household of someone who was, was prominent. In the book of Acts, it will talk about prominent women who became obedient to the faith. Um, all of those people, all of those early disciples, uh, they left something solid. Uh, they left something familiar. They left something that was sound uh, as far as uh, sturdy and safe in order to follow Jesus by faith. Um, that is still happening in our world today. Um, I am so thankful for those folks who take risks, uh, even of physical harm, to take the gospel uh, to distant places uh, where there is great uh, danger from disease and even great danger from persecution. But even here, um, if we stay right here in our, our Bible Belt community, there are so many risks, um, whether that's our reputation, uh, whether that's our possessions and how we use our possessions uh, for God's glory, uh, whether that is our mindset. Are there things that I believed in the past that because I'm a follower in Jesus, I can no longer uh, practice? Um, and that may be habits that we have. That may be opinions that we have. Um, if a person comes to Christ who's grown up um, in a very uh, racist environment or a very uh, sexist environment, um, those are risks to leave that. Those are sacrifices that have to be made to leave that thinking behind, to be willing to say, I've been wrong about some of these things. And I see through the gospel uh, that all people are, are created in God's image, uh, that all people are worthy of love uh, because we're created uh, in God's image, that in Christ uh, we find true freedom. Those are things that are hard to admit uh, when we've been raised in a different way. I think about all of our dear friends uh, who, in studying the scriptures, have come to see uh, the path to Christ is different. 
than what they were taught, even taught by people that they greatly admired, uh, people that they greatly love, uh, people that taught them those things in good conscience, but yet they have studied the scriptures and they have uh, heard the scriptures preached and proclaimed and, and they've come to different conclusions. They've, they've come to realize that some areas of their life are not what they ought to be and they're not in accordance with God's word. And so they've been willing to take the risk of making those changes, uh, of, of coming to Christ uh, openly and honestly and simply. Um, those are big risks um, for those relationships uh, and those are powerful. And deciding to follow Jesus will cause us to be willing uh, to take those risks. So I would say sacrifices and risk. And the final thing I'll mention, uh, and we'll go back to uh, Peter's words here, or Jesus' words to Peter, I should say, in Matthew 19. The final thing I'll mention is that deciding to follow Jesus, sacrifice is involved, risk is involved, but there's also an expectation of reward. When we follow Jesus, it will lead us to look toward uh, the reward that is coming. Uh, Peter says, as we said, this is Matthew chapter 19 and verse 27, uh, we've left all to follow you. What shall we have? And Jesus says, Assuredly, I say to you that in the regeneration, when the Son of Man sits on the throne of his glory, you who have followed me will also sit uh, judging the twelve tribes uh, of Israel. And everyone who has left houses or brothers or sisters or father or mother or wife or children or lands for my name's sake shall receive a hundredfold and inherit eternal life. But many who are first will be last and the last will be first. He goes on then in the next chapter, in chapter 20, to tell uh, the parable about the workers in the vineyard uh, and that the reward was equal uh, even when the sacrifices seemed to be uh, different in different amounts from our human perspective. Um, one of the things I love about that is that Jesus doesn't say, well, you know, you're really just doing this for because it's the right thing to do. Um, that would have been true, of course. He could have said, uh, you know, this is the right thing to do whether you get a reward or not. Um, and some of us want to be more holy, I think, than Jesus uh, or want to kind of set ourselves up in that way that, oh, we shouldn't think about uh, heaven. We shouldn't think about blessings. We should think about doing this because it's the right thing to do. And while certainly I think following Jesus and his moral teachings uh, are the right thing to do regardless of a reward, um, the New Testament writers, whether it's Peter or Paul or James, um, they all, John, they all appeal to uh, this idea that, yes, there are sacrifices to be made. Yes, there are risks that we must take. But when we decide to follow Jesus, we can also be assured that we can look forward to a reward. Uh, Christ does not ask us to bear a cross uh, without the promise of a reward for those who are faithful. Um, when we think about the idea of, of when Paul in, in Philippians chapter 2 talks about Jesus going to the cross, um, you know, despising the shame, sitting down the right hand of God. Um, Jesus knew that there was glory uh, beyond the cross, beyond that sacrifice. Um, and we should be able to realize that as well and to appreciate uh, that aspect of God's uh, work and God's plan as well. When Jesus says uh, that we are to deny ourselves, take up our cross daily and follow after him in Luke 9 and verse 23, that daily sacrifice, that daily risk of carrying the cross uh, ultimately brings an eternal reward. Uh, Paul talks about, we, we mentioned this in our Sunday night class a few weeks ago uh, in 2 Timothy 4, really in the last few paragraphs that we have from the Apostle Paul, um, that he is going to receive a crown of life. Uh, and it's not for him only, but to all those who have longed uh, for the Lord's appearing. Uh, Paul doesn't try to say, well, I've done all this just because it was the right thing to do. It certainly was. Uh, he certainly was obedient to Christ because uh, he realized Christ's glory. He realized that Christ was due that honor. But he also was faithful because he realized that uh, ultimately that reward would be present. Uh, as we mentioned last Sunday evening uh, in our class about Paul, um, the idea when he talks about uh, why was he given uh, visions uh, of glorious things, um, well, to help him uh, through all the difficult trials, know that that reward, uh, that restoration of that glory, uh, that being in the presence of Christ, that that was coming, uh, and coming certainly for him. Uh, in Jesus' words that were penned, uh, written down by John in the book of Revelation, uh, from chapter 2 and verse 10, talking about uh, that particular congregation was going to experience difficulty, but be faithful unto death, and you will receive uh, the crown of life. 
um, again, not just faithful um, when it is easy to be faithful, not just faithful um, for a long period of time, but faithful even in the face of persecution, faithful even in the face of uh, death uh, and death's uh, seeming victory. Uh, when we don't believe in a reward, um, when we don't uh, preach the gospel and share the message of Jesus uh, and encourage people to follow Jesus uh, by including and by highlighting the expectation of reward, we've robbed ourselves of one of the great promises of Scripture. Um, I want to serve Christ because Christ deserves uh, glory, uh, because Christ is worthy of my service, because his sacrifice uh, draws me to him, but I also serve him because I know uh, that in serving him faithfully, uh, his grace, his mercy, his compassion are continually extended. Uh, and I not only have the ability to be rewarded myself um, uh, through his grace, but have the ability to share that, that good news with others. Uh, and so uh, if we're going to decide to follow Jesus, uh, we're talking about decisions matter in the month of July. If we're going to talk about the idea that, that we need to decide to follow Jesus and why should we do that, um, we need to realize we're going to have to make sacrifices, um, that it inherently involves risk. Not always the same risk uh, for every person, uh, the same degree of physical risk, uh, but there's always a risk to uh, some part of our lives uh, when we choose to follow Christ. And then certainly uh, we want to look to uh, the reward that we're given in Jesus. I don't know any other life um, that's better. Uh, I've, I've read a lot. I love to read. I love to study. I've seen a lot. I've, I've had a lot of discussions with uh, friends and with colleagues, fellow students who have chosen a different way, chosen a different path. Um, they have the right to make that decision. Um, we have the right to make our decision. Uh, and I'm thankful that when I look at Scripture, I'm drawn, and I pray that you are as well, again and again, to the example of Jesus. Um, I want to make sacrifices for him because he made such a sacrifice for me. Uh, I want to take risks for him because he left a perfect situation to come to the most imperfect situation uh, on my behalf and on your behalf. And I certainly want to honor him and serve him uh, because he's promised a reward. He's promised a place of healing, a place of wholeness a place of perfection, a place of maturity, uh, and I want to be there. And I want as many uh, of those I love and care about and all people uh, to be there as well. And so I hope that's a challenge to us uh, today, uh, that when we uh, give up things for God, uh, when we're willing to do uh, make those uh, commitments here, uh, that ultimately uh, that reward is present. Again, appreciate uh, each one of you uh, being here today. Again, we're sharing this on Sunday morning. You may be watching it uh, later on in the week as a way of encouragement uh, or just to kind of supplement as you drive from place to place. But whatever brings you here, uh, we're thankful. Uh, if you are using this as your primary uh, worship service on Sunday, uh, again, I know we have folks who are traveling, folks who are at home uh, and dealing with sickness. Uh, I'm going to offer those prayers now for uh, the bread and for the cup. And again, this is completely pre-recorded. This is not, um, you shouldn't have any issues with buffering if you've made it to this point. Uh, so I would encourage you to take some time to read a hymn, to sing even uh, with your family, to read through a passage like 1 Corinthians 11, uh, where Paul talks about the Lord uh, gave this to me. He showed me this is how it was. Paul wasn't there physically, but he had a word of the Lord about how the Lord's Supper was instituted. Uh, that's also, of course, mirrored in the four gospel accounts. Uh, take some time to think about that. I'm going to pray for the bread, uh, and then I'll pause for just a moment and pray for the cup. But I would encourage you, uh, if you are uh, participating in this aspect of our worship, to pause the video and take what time uh, you need with who you were with uh, in order to celebrate uh, and memorialize this moment fully. Let's go ahead, and then I'll pray for the bread and uh, the cup as well. Let's pray. Our Heavenly Father, we are grateful for Jesus. And as we've talked about today, we're thankful for the sacrifice that he was willing to make on our behalf. And as we live each day, Lord, we ask that you would help us to sacrifice for him. As we go out into this week, we ask that this moment of taking the bread would draw our minds back to the cross and to his body. 
and that we would be witnesses there in our minds and in our hearts and through the pages of Scripture, and that we would see the suffering that he endured, and that we might take this bread and proclaim his death until he comes. It's in his name we pray. Let's pray also for the cup at this time. Let's pray together. Likewise, our Heavenly Father, we are mindful also of the blood that was shed upon the cross that we might have the hope of everlasting life. We're thankful that that blood flowed down and as we walk in the light of Christ, that his blood continually cleanses us. We're thankful for that cleansing. We know we fall short of your glory. And we need that intercession. We need our advocate to stand on our behalf. And we ask that we would be covered by your grace that we receive through the blood of Christ. Help us as we take this cup to be reminded of that blood. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Again, thank you uh, so much for joining in this time with us and for sharing this moment with us. Uh, grateful, grateful to be able to uh, be with you, although we're not together physically to share this time uh, today. I do have just a few announcements to share, and I realize that uh, since we're on a little bit of a different timeline, uh, these may be dated or there may be some changes that have taken place. And certainly, um, if we have any major updates, we'll update those uh, on our Facebook page uh, and please, uh, please notice those. Those of you who've been giving, um, uh, some have been giving by mail uh, that haven't been there in person. Uh, others have been saving that up and bringing it and so forth. Uh, if you haven't been there each week, uh, we appreciate that. And, and we want to make that as easy as possible for you. So if you have a need with that, uh, just let us know. Uh, we've been very, um, everyone's been very good about that during uh, our transitional time that we've had. And we appreciate that, but just want to make you aware that we have other ways uh, we can do mail or pick up or anything like that if it's necessary. I do have a few birthdays and anniversaries to mention. Uh, today, uh, Sunday the 17th, is Daryl and Burnell McLean's uh, anniversary. We're thankful for them. Uh, on Tuesday, uh, Ethan Oliver will have a birthday. And then on Thursday, the 21st, Ella Bynum will have uh, a birthday. And so we're thankful for those uh, two young people and two people that are young at heart. Uh, who have uh, anniversary and birthdays this week. As I mentioned, Dakota Betts will be at the building today on the 17th at 9 a.m. for our adult class and 10 a.m. for our uh, worship time. If you're watching this at home and you have someone uh, who's able to attend and you're watching this beforehand, by all means, encourage them to go out and uh, be present at the building. Uh, that would encourage uh, everyone, encourage Dakota especially uh, today. Uh, reminder, no 5 p.m. service tonight. We'll make sure to mention that. Uh, in our comment section as well, but I want everyone to be aware of that. Um, we do have our prayer calendars that are out and being posted each day on Facebook and Instagram. You can follow those. The links to those are in uh, the comments here. Also, we have copies of the Power for Today uh, booklet. A new one came out for July, uh, August, and uh, September. So if you need uh, one of those, uh, we have those at the building. Uh, and or we can get you one if you if you so desire. Uh, we do have a new report from the Mosier family and their work uh, in Louisiana. We also had an update from Chris Carter and an update from 21st Century Global Missions. And we have those, um, some of them in email, some of them also in print copy, but we can um, let you see those. Uh, we'll have copies of the building, of course, too. Uh, but if you need to, um, need to see those uh, at home, we can do that also. Uh, there are several summer series, uh, that's kind of hard for me to say, several summer series, uh, Vacation Bible School and Gospel Meetings uh, that are beginning uh, today uh, on the 17th. Um, and I would uh, remind you of Union Chapel is beginning today. Uh, I will be, Lord willing, Wednesday night on um, the 20th. I will be at Campbell Street uh, in Jackson. I know some went over and uh, heard Bobby Rawson at Martin. Uh, last week, others of you may have seen Roger Graham at Hatler's Chapel. Uh, Bobby will also be at Hatler's Chapel, and I will be there also a little bit later on 
um, it, after the school year starts. So uh, we'll try to make you aware of those, particularly people that we know locally. Um, I know Palmersville has a meeting coming up uh, the next Sunday uh, as well, and I'll try to get the dates right on those. I know I've, I've uh, given those wrong in the past, uh, including I think maybe last week I, I messed up on uh, the VBS at Greenfield that took place, but uh, we'll try to get those corrected and uh, include those in our posts where you can have those dates and times. Uh, we do want to continue to remember our, our community as we recover from the tornado. We're thankful that we've had a little bit more rain, uh, not very much, uh, of course, uh, and still in need of that. And we continue to pray uh, for good weather conditions for our crops and for our school uh, and those practicing sports and that sort of thing. Um, we do want to extend our sympathy to uh, Brian Parham's family. Uh, Brian is the nephew of Mike and Jimmy Gale Parham. Uh, his mother is Connie, who lives here in Dresden. Uh, he passed away in Missouri uh, last week. He'd been dealing with cancer for several years, and we want to continue to remember uh, that family. Um, according to uh, their plan, they were going to have a memorial service, uh, or a uh, memorial visitation, I should say, in Missouri uh, last night, I believe, on Saturday evening. And then um, in the future, uh, I believe the plan will be to uh, bring Brian's ashes back and, and uh, bury those at Lebanon. Uh, his parents, of course, will be buried there. So um, just want to continue to remember that family. They've obviously dealt with a lot of um, loss over the years. And, and with Brian being a young person, uh, want to definitely continue to remember uh, his mom and son and, and uh, their family at this time. Uh, Tammy Dole, uh, who is a friend to many of us and part of our congregation church family, uh, had been in the hospital for several weeks, but she's been home a little over a week now uh, and is improving, getting stronger, uh, had gotten weak from her treatments and then was dealing with an infection, but is uh, improving. And she wanted to uh, let everyone know she appreciates the cards and food and, and most certainly the prayers. Uh, Tammy is a, uh, a great person and, and has been uh, active in our church last last year too, uh, and of course known to many of us in the community long before that. So we want to continue to remember Tammy and her family at this time. I want to remember Rachel Good, uh, who's taking uh, chemo treatments and um, um, making progress with those and uh, dealing with, with those at this time. And want to remember uh, Garner and the kids, uh, obviously, as well. Uh, Miss Myra Deaver uh, fell. Uh, but is recovering uh, at home and want to continue to remember her. Also, Tommy Bradbury and Lee Gwynn are both still at the Weekly County Nursing Home. We want to remember them and, of course, Judith at this time. Uh, Kay Branson also has been dealing with sickness and uh, recovering from sickness. We want to remember Ray Burris as well as Belinda Badgett and Brenda Kay Burris. Uh, that would be Greta's nephew, niece, and sister uh, who all live down in the Nutbush, uh, Brownsville, Ripley area and had been dealing with uh, a lot of sickness, uh, both of her niece and nephew, both dealing with cancer, and particularly Belinda has been having a very difficult time uh, and want to continue to remember them. Please remember Miss Jeanette uh, Robinson, Miss Sue Brewer, Miss Faye Robinson, as they're dealing with uh, health issues at this time. Uh, continue to remember Lanny and Carolyn, as, long, as well as uh, Dolores and Ricky. Uh, Miss Dolores has been very ill uh, the last couple of weeks with um, sinus infection and had some issues with uh, a bad tooth. I want to continue to remember them at this time. I want to remember Andrew Hughes's parents, uh, Miss Roberta uh, and um, uh, Miss Robert Boyd. They have both had uh, health issues, and Miss Roberta is uh, in the assisted living uh, there in Bales. I want to continue to remember. Uh, them and their extended family at this time. Uh, Richard Adams uh, has also been taking uh, cancer treatments and uh, Tyler Mayo, the young man that has been on our prayer list, uh, was supposed to have surgery. Uh, I don't have an update on that, uh, but he's having a hip replacement uh, dealing with bone cancer. And so we want to continue to remember uh, them also. Uh, we've had several folks that have been out of town uh, that have returned safely. Uh, I know at least two or three families that have been uh, affected by COVID uh, in the last week or so, uh, either in their immediate family or in their uh, more distant family. And uh, we obviously know uh, just from uh, our experience with other things and, and now two and a half, almost three years of COVID, uh, that when school starts, we'll probably see uh, uh, another uptick in that. And just want to uh, let everyone, uh, you know, advise everyone to be careful. 
uh, to take what precautions we can. Uh, obviously, no um, plan is 100%. Uh, we've seen that from some in our congregation um, that have you know, gotten sick despite taking many precautions, uh, but we certainly want to do all that we can uh, to uh, stay healthy uh, so that we can continue to serve uh, and so that we can continue to be out and be around our uh, neighbors and friends and be an influence for good. I'm sure there's something that I've uh, neglected, that I've left out. Uh, and marie and I, uh, when you see this, Lord willing, will be uh, on, on our trip. Uh, we appreciate the congregation uh, helping us to be able to do that, to get away for a few days uh, that we have not been able to do on a Sunday um, um, in quite a while. And uh, we're thankful that Dakota was able to uh, come in and uh, fill in for Garner, who was filling in for me. I uh, appreciate Dakota's kindness in doing that. I know he'll do a great, uh, a great job this morning. Let's um, um, go ahead, if we can, and dismiss with a word of prayer, and we can go out and have a great week. And I would encourage, um, encourage all of us to consider what we're willing to give up um, and what we're living for and what expectation we have uh, as we decide to follow Jesus each day. Let's pray together. Our Heavenly Father, as we close this time together, we're so grateful for the opportunity that we've had to share this few moments in your presence, to share this time, albeit virtually, with one another. Lord, we ask that you would bless all the upcoming activities that are taking place, the many congregations around about who are uh, seeking to share the gospel in our community through vacation Bible schools and summer series and gospel meetings. We ask, Lord, that we would have the strength to be able to participate in these efforts as they have supported our efforts in the past. And we ask that you would help us in our day-to-day -day lives to reach out uh, with the gospel. Help us to fully decide to follow Jesus so that we can extend that message and that invitation to others. Be with us and bless us in the week ahead. It's in Christ's name we pray. Amen. Amen. Again, we're uh, grateful that you were here with us, and I hope everyone can go out and uh, have a great week. I uh, hope everyone that is traveling is safe, and hope those that have uh, been dealing with sickness can continue to improve. Have a great week.